Give him a hand clap of praise today. He's worthy. Hallelujah. That precious blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the top of Mount McKinley to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. That blood still covers. Amen. From Mount Everest to the lowest point of this earth. Amen. His blood is made available. Praise God. What a hope we have in the blood of Jesus. Are you thankful for His blood? That washes away all our sins. Praise God. So glad that you're here this morning in church. Praise God. Doesn't this feel wonderful? Praise God to be in the house of the Lord. We welcome our guests and visitors today. We're so glad to have the story of Anderson and her family with us worshiping. Also, Gina Marie Sanson. Amen. Thank you for being here. And I believe there's some others. I don't have your name today, but we welcome you to the Life Center today. Praise God. Right here in the month of December on this cold Florida day. Isn't it wonderful to be in the warmth of the presence of the Lord? And everybody said amen. It's going to be an exciting week. Amen. And weeks to come to close out this year. But I want you to be thinking about something. Amen. I always want to begin the new year outright. Praise God. We begin each year with a Daniel's fast. So I know you're excited about the turkey and the ham and the dressing and the apple pie and all of the trimmings, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. But at the beginning of the new year, we're going to come together for 10 days of spiritual warfare. We're declaring war on the enemy that's fighting us in this city. Amen? So January the 2nd to the 11th will be a 10-day Daniel's fast. That's a partial fast. Amen? We usually go the first three days on a complete fast. Amen. What you do is between you and God. But there's a blessing in doing it. Brother James Feldman Evangelist will be preaching here on January the 8th. It's going to be an awesome way to start the new year. Amen? Praise God. I said it's going to be an awesome way to start the new year. Praise God. Amen. Turn into Luke chapter 19. Thank you for standing this morning. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, music team. Didn't they do an awesome job once again? Brother Hudoff and crew. Amen. The praise singers, I appreciate their dedication. They get here at 8.30. Everybody say 8.30. While some of you are still asleep, 8.30, they're here practicing, singing, and praying. And I appreciate that discipline. Amen. It's under the Lord. Amen. So thank you for your dedication. Luke chapter 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, for the crowd, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus! Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Verse 6 reads, And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that's a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I want to preach to you this morning on the subject of I must see Jesus. Lord, speak to us once again from your precious holy word. Lord, it's our desire to have more of you in our lives and in our hearts. Jesus, we desire to see you like never before. Lord Jesus, help us today to respond to the word. Help us to draw closer to you. You know every need that's present, God. I pray that you would bless your people today as they pray, as they seek your face. Bless those that want to see you, Jesus. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Would you say it with me, Lord, I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you in a different way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't it a comfort to know that Jesus loves short people? He loves medium build people. And he loves tall people. God's not a respecter of persons today. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. But I want you to know that Jesus loves you for who you are today. And with that thought, you can be seated this morning. Who is it today that you would say that I really do need to see them? Maybe a relative from out of state. We were blessed the past three days to have Landon, our other son, visit from out of state. It was a quick trip. But it was a good time to see him come home from a journey. And as life unfolds and we get caught up in the vortex of responsibilities and challenges and the pressures of life, life has a way of presenting challenges due to logistics and time that's made necessary for it to happen. You know, it's a struggle sometimes to keep God and our family at the forefront of our lives because the fact is there are many appointments and people and duties that tend to distract us from keeping our priorities in order church we need more of Jesus but for some it's just a struggle to make it to church we say we need more of Jesus but our actions speak otherwise I want you to write it down this morning there will always be challenges to singing more of Jesus. There's always going to be roadblocks and there's always going to be excuses that come to mind when you're striving to get closer to Jesus. In addition, there's the increased pressure and pace and schedule of Christmas gatherings that are upon us and the gift giving and the unrealistic expectations that I talked about at the beginning of church today it's an amazing thing as we go through this schedule the blur and the things that are happening can turn us away from the real reason for the season which is Jesus Christ we all have different challenges to see what is most dear to us but the bottom line is we will do everything that we can in our own power to see someone or something that we feel is important to us. Isn't it amazing how that we make it happen when there's somebody that we dearly want to see? Years ago, there was a man apprehended by authorities that was infatuated with Elvis Presley. They said that he would climb up in a tree close to the fence of Elvis's home and he would watch with a pair of binoculars just hoping to get a glimpse of the king of rock and roll the man had a problem the man was an idol worshiper and the man was a stalker he attended every concert that he could get to just to see him once again Elvis Presley but in our text Zacchaeus the chief tax collector was perhaps a man that had never met a person that he could not cheat or a pocket full of coins that he could not hustle he was short in stature but he was long on enemies he was a con artist and his business was to look for the means to take from people and to take advantage of as many as he could what he looked for on a daily basis no doubt was offensive to those around him. His business was to ask of people what they had worked so hard for. And what he had done was built quite a treasure chest for himself at the expense of others. He was a part of the JRS, the Jericho Revenue Service. And when Jesus was passing through Jericho, Half the town showed up to get a glimpse of him. There was not many friendly folks to make way for him, the chief tax collector. 
to see Jesus who was passing by. I can guarantee you that there was nobody that was saying, oh, that poor little short fella over there. Would somebody make way so that he can get in the front of the line so that he can see Jesus? That's not the story that I read. But if you could use your imagination today, I believe there was a little short man that was jumping just to get a glimpse over all of the taller people. Jesus is coming. I've heard about him. I've heard about the miracles, but I just can't seem to see him. It was at this point that he went into Zach attack. He dropped every responsibility. He forgot everything that he was doing on that day. And he had a mindset, Brother Hal, I've got to get to Jesus. So aggressively, no doubt, he looked around and maybe he found a, a rock close to the road that Jesus was passing by. And he climbed up on that rock and realized this is not good enough. Maybe a chariot was sitting on the side of the road and he jumped up in the chariot and exclaimed, you know what, I'm up a little bit higher, but still I can't see Jesus that's passing by. And then he saw it. It was a tree. It was a sycamore tree. And as he spotted the tree, verse 4 reads that he decided to run. When's the last time that you ran to church to see Jesus? When's the last time you ran to a prayer meeting because you couldn't hardly wait to get here because you were coming to see Jesus? Something to think about this morning. But as he saw the tree, he had one goal in mind. I don't know how I'm going to get up to that tallest branch, but I've got to see Jesus. I've got to see him for myself. As he struggled to see the Lord from the vantage point of a tree, he never imagined that Jesus was going to stop and take a good look at him. Something to think about this morning. In addition, he never dreamed that he would hear the words spoken by Jesus himself. Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. Zacchaeus, it might offend some people around me, but I'm coming to your house today. No doubt there was excitement and anticipation as Zacchaeus maybe jumped or crawled down from that tree and that limb, but oh, what a day it was for old Zach. As he struggled to see the Lord from that vantage point of the tree, he never imagined on that day, on that, day that Jesus would be coming to his house. How would you respond to the announcement that Jesus was coming to your house today? How would you clean the house? How would you prepare the kitchen? It's something to think about this morning because the fact is, my friend, Jesus wants to come to your house. Jesus wants to come into your place of abode. Jesus wants to talk to you today about salvation. Amen? Because Jesus has come into this world to seek and to save that which is lost. You know, there was a little short man in a big sycamore tree that saw Jesus. And thankfully, church, things were never the same again. As he climbed down from that tree, everything was changed forever. There was a transformation that took place in his life. In his heart, in his mind, things were really different once Jesus was brought into his house. For them, the statement was made, salvation has come to this house today. What an awesome statement. My friend, if you've been looking at the wrong things, and you've been looking in the wrong places, and you've been looking in the wrong direction, it could be that you aren't up high enough to get a view of who Jesus really is. Maybe there's some distractions Maybe there's some things that you can't see over this morning that have come between you and your God. I want to encourage you this morning, if you have to run, run to Jesus. If you have to climb up in a tree to see Him, go ahead and do it. He's not going to disappoint you. Has anybody come here this morning to see who Jesus is? He's your Savior. 
that's your desire, would you lift your hands and say, Lord, I've come to see you today. Lord, I've come to this house today, not just to sit here, Lord, and to be entertained, but I've come here today to find salvation. Hallelujah. You know, in spite of the limitations and the hindrances that we encounter in this life, Jesus is as close as the mention of His name. But it takes a certain determination that no matter the obstacle, no matter the distance, no matter the stature, you can get to Him. You can see Him. You can experience Him. You can feel the same Holy Ghost that I felt in this church here today. You can experience the same place of baptism in the name of Jesus that I've experienced. Does anybody want to see Jesus this morning? I'm preaching about salvation. I'm preaching about something that will change your life forever. Mm. Acts 17 and 28 says it this way. That they should seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. He's in this place right now. He's listening. He's looking for somebody that's looking for more of Jesus. Mm. If you will seek the Lord, if you will put forth an effort today, my friend, you're going to find Him. There's friends in this world, there's people in this world that will turn their backs on you. But I'm telling you, if you'll come to Jesus on bended knees today and lifted hands and an open heart, He's here to touch you. He's here to deliver you. He's here to save you. He's here to heal your body. Has anybody come to see Jesus this morning? Oh, let's pray this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Would you cry out to Jesus? Would you cry out to Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I must see Jesus. Mm. Why not do everything that you can to get a glimpse of who He is today? Why not climb up just a little bit higher? Why not get out on a limb and swallow your pride? Say, I'm going to do something a little different on this Sunday morning in this Pentecostal church. My friend, it's a great goal to have to find Jesus. It's a great goal to have to see Jesus, to experience His Spirit and His power in this place. He's come to seek and to save that which is lost. He hasn't come into your house to talk about politics. He hasn't come to hear what you want for Christmas. He has come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's His mission. He has set His face like a flint. He determined in His heart, I'm going to go through Calvary. I'm going to shed my blood because it was for your soul. He came into this world, amen, to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm. So Mr. Zacchaeus, Mr. Short Stuff, <laughs> he found more than he was looking for. And it works for all of us right here, right now. Oh, Zach, he had shortchanged a lot of people. But what he was offered from Jesus went above and beyond anything he had experienced in his life. You know, it's the way of the Lord to go above and beyond what you're looking for. That's the question you need to be thinking about today. What are you looking for? What have you tried in this life that has not satisfied your soul? What have you reached out to and connected that has left you lost and undone and hurting today? I encourage you this morning to look unto Jesus. Would you all look up this morning? Would you take your eyes off of me just for a moment and just look up into the heavens? Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands with me and say, Lord, I've come to this place. 
to see you, Jesus, for who you are. Hallelujah. He's come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's his desire. It's his mission. It's his heartbeat today that in this church house somebody would find him, that someone would see him for who he really is, your Lord and your Savior today. Would you say it today, Lord, I've come to see you. Lord, I've come to see you. I've come to see you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have you ever had it happen in the past where you went to go see somebody and they didn't show up? They left you hanging. They left you disappointed. Angry, you turned around and you went back home because who you were looking for, you didn't ever find them. Can I tell you this morning that Jesus will never shortchange you? I don't care what you've been involved in in your past. I don't care if you're the worst of the worst. Jesus has come into this place to seek and to save that which was lost. He loves you today. He's reaching for you today. He's looking for somebody that says, I've got to climb up just a little bit higher. I've got to see him. I've got to get out on the limb. Jesus, I need you more than anything in this world. Oh, if I could just see Jesus. Hallelujah. He was looking for Jesus up close. And he ended up having him at his house. He came face to face with the greatest miracle known to man. He was convicted of his sins because he said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. That's conviction. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him for Old. Can I tell you this morning that when you really see Jesus, when you really see Jesus and experience Him for who He is, it'll cause you to fall down on your knees. It'll bring you to a place of repentance where you lift your hands and you say, you know what, I don't care what anybody else in this church is thinking. I've just seen Jesus. What I have just felt and experienced in that church house, it was heavenly. It was divine. I've seen Jesus. It will bring tears to your face. Hallelujah. It will bring speaking in tongues. Amen. As the Spirit gives utterance. It's the real thing found in the Word of God in the book of Acts chapter 2. It's for you. It's for your children and your children too. It's to see Jesus. It's to experience Him in a greater measure than you've ever had before. It was the greatest miracle that a little short man experienced when he came face to face with Jesus. It was salvation. Verse 9 says, This day Jesus said, Salvation has come to this house. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The name of Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. What does He want to do for you? Ezekiel chapter 36 and 26 says it so well. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. God wants to give you a new heart. God wants to give you a new life. He wants to give you an abundant life. Does anybody want to see Jesus in a totally different way? Come on, this is nothing spooky or strange. It's coming right out of the Word of God. There's a passion within me as we close out one year and we enter into a new one. Church, I want to see Jesus more than ever before. I want to have revival. I want to tell more people about Jesus. Oh, does anybody want to see Jesus this morning? Would you stand with me this morning as we bring, bring this to a close? John chapter 20. John chapter 20 in closing. Resistance, you can come. I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Somebody's about to see Jesus like never before. Come on, is there any faith in the house? Is there anybody that would respond to what I have preached today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 20 and 25, after the resurrection, Thomas wouldn't have it any other way. He said, I've got to see him for myself. Thomas said, except I see. Except I see him for myself. Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. Thomas said, I will not believe. Then saith he to Thomas, this is what Jesus said. He said, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, he had a revelation of the one true God. This is what he said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Before you can believe in the Lord as your Savior, you've got to see Him. Before you will repent of your sins, be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost, you've got to see Him. And then you will believe. So this morning as we close out this service, is there anybody that wants to see Jesus one more time? Is there anybody that's not worried about somebody watching them climb up in a tree and to climb out on a limb? Because you know within your heart, you need more of Jesus. You need more of his love. You need more of his mercy. Come on, is there anybody else that wants to see Jesus? I'm telling you, the view's wonderful up here. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that would lift their hands and say, Lord, I must see you, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Come on. Would you lift your hands with me all across the sanctuary? I want to see you. I want to see you, Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. I want to see you. want to see him this morning? Just worship the Lord this morning. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. your desire this morning. is reaching for you. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus is looking at you today. How 
will you respond to Jesus today? He loves you. He's holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. I need to see you, Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. I see you, Lord. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. That's we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. I am lifted up. I lift up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. 